my name is Susan Brady, and back in November of 2009, I was diagnosed with rectal cancer. Fortunately, it was caught early, it was stage 2, and um, sort of went through the standard protocol of care, uh, chemo and radiation for the first six weeks, and then surgery to remove the cancer. And then I uh, also had an ileostomy during that surgery, so I had uh, six months worth of uh, not having an intestine working while it was healing. During that time, I had eight rounds of chemo uh, and then surgery in August of 2010 to reverse the ileostomy. Um, the chemo that I was on after my first surgery uh, is known, it's a platinum drug, oaxaloplatin, and it's known to cause neuropathies. Um, most often it's tingling in the hands and feet. That's what they tell you to look for, to, to tell them if, that, if you feel you know, any tingling in your hands and feet, of which I did not the entire duration of my chemo. Uh, after my surgery in August 2010, I got a little tingling in my left toes, which was very minor, very, very minor. But in September of 2010, uh, I got neuropathy, uh, it hit me like a freight train. I woke up one morning and my hands were frozen and my feet from my knees all the way down were frozen. And when I say frozen, it felt like I was wearing cement gloves and cement boots. That's how tight and, and painful the, the freezing was, literally like you were frozen. Um, I really didn't know what it was. I didn't know that neuropathy could be that extreme since they told me to watch out for tingling, not for freezing. Um, so when I called my chemo-oncologist, uh, he explained to me that could be neuropathy caused by the chemo, but he wanted me to see a neurologist to make sure nothing else was going on, which I did. Um, and my uh, the person that I saw first was pretty inconclusive uh, with respect to was it caused by chemo, was it caused by something else. They were all sort of surprised that it hit me as fast and the way that it did and as extreme as it did. Um, so they weren't quite sure that it was just all caused by the chemo, but ultimately we determined that it was caused by the chemo. Um, it just have to be, have, I happen to be an extreme case. Uh, a lot of people don't have it this extreme, or we're not aware of people who have it this extreme. Um, in the meantime, while I was dealing, um, waiting for the neurologist appointment, I did an awful lot of research about neuropathies. I ordered every book I could. I went, I scoured the internet for information about neuropathies and how to treat neuropathies and what to do for neuropathies. And um, not a lot. I mean, there's no quote unquote cure for it. You just it has to run its course. Um, and you have to wait it out, as supposedly everybody says. Uh, my first neurologist told me um, there's nothing he could do for me, and just to go home and wait it out. I uh, prescribed an, an antidepressant, Elavil, which helps supposedly to manage the nerve pain as well. Um, uh, and pretty much didn't want to um, hear anything that I had to say to him. I, I talked to him about alternative types of therapies because they talk about supplements, they talk about acupuncture, they talk about yoga, they're, you know, alternative types of things to do to help with neuropathies. He basically had no interest in talking to me about any of this stuff. So uh, I uh, walked out of his office and decided to go see somebody else because I certainly wasn't going to accept that. Um, and I did. I saw two more neurologists who pretty much said the exact same thing to me, um, that there was nothing they could do for me. and. Um, I pretty much got to just go home and wait it out and take your, they did prescribe Neurontin for me, which was one of the newer medications that they, uh, they have for managing the nerve pain. So uh, these two guys pretty much did the same thing and I just, again, didn't want to stop there because I refused to accept the fact that there was nothing else I could do. So our fourth neurologist, by this time it was mid to late October. And one of the first things he told me was to uh, start moving, get, get back into exercising, uh, and, and to get some yoga in. Uh, and um, he was the first person that at least started talking to me about other things to be done other than taking a medication and just going home and sitting on a couch and being miserable. Uh, so I, I did. And since I couldn't put sneakers on, I went into, I started, I started doing water jogging in the therapy pool, hot water, because I couldn't tolerate cold water at all. 
And I started doing yoga every day to open up the spine um, and hopefully stimulate the nerves. I did this for October, November, December, January, three or four months. And uh, I, I will say that the absolute extreme excruciating pain did start to get a little bit better. Um, my pain was pretty pretty extreme. I mean, uh, I, to the point of really feeling like I was being eaten alive from the inside out by ants and bees and the, the absolute burning and, and stinging and freezing and just... Um, tightening of, of, of everything down there in my feet was pretty excruciating. Uh, and it went away a little, not a lot, but a little. Um, I would say it was probably sometime in February, my husband and I were reading, and he was reading his Alert Diver magazine, uh, he's a recreational diver, and he turned and he looked at me and he said, what about hyperbaric oxygen therapy treatment? And I said, what about it? And he said, why, why wouldn't that help you? And I said, I don't even know what it is. And he started to explain to me that it's what the divers use for bends and that's how it originated. But he said, if it's for cellular nerve growth, why wouldn't it help you? And I said, I don't know why it wouldn't help me. Maybe it would help me. I've never heard of it in relation to neuropathy. The first thing I did was get online and scour the internet again for hyperbaric oxygen therapy treatment related to neuropathies. Nothing. Not a thing. Absolutely nothing. I had an appointment already scheduled with my neurologist for March, so I decided to talk to him in March about it. And I asked him about it. He basically said, it's not proven to work. And I said, but it's not proven not to work, right? And he said, no, it's not proven not to work, but there hasn't really been any research on it, and I can't tell you that it's going to work for you. And I said, but it's not going to hurt me, is it? He said, nope, it's not going to hurt you. And I said, well, then I think I want to try it. I said, I have driven by a sign on US-19 that says hyperbaric oxygen therapy treatment. And I said, uh, and he said, Dr. Alan Spiegel. And I said, that, that's the name on the sign. And he said, that would be who you would see. And I said, OK. And he promptly said that I would be his first patient that ever tried it. And he would be very interested in knowing what happened. So I left the office, and I called for a consult. Um, and I guess that um, I started sometime in mid-April, um, and I keep, I keep a journal, I've always kept a journal since the beginning, since I was diagnosed with the cancer, and when I go back and I read what my symptoms were like uh, in the April time frame, while I was better than I was in September, that's not saying a lot considering how bad I was in September, and it had been what, eight months, six to eight months by then, um, and I was not getting any appreciably better. And the neurologist had said this could take a year or two or three or may never go away or who knows, depending on your body. Again, such an extreme case that they don't know. Um, I was uh, still in pain every day, maybe not 24-7, maybe 12-7. Um, again, fire ants eating me up, bees feeling like this cycling in and out of really extreme pain to lesser pain, the real freezing still in my feet, and my hands would still consistently go numb. The dexterity of my fingers was better, but not appreciably better. Um, and significant um, discomfort, uh, and discomfort is putting it nicely. Um, pain, really. Uh, not wanting to, uh, <laughs> really not wanting to do anything because the only thing that made you feel halfway comfortable was sitting down, putting your feet up and not moving and not having anybody touch you because the second anybody touched you, it was just be like setting off the bee's nest. Um, I had my first day in the chamber and when I got out of the chamber, um, I looked at the gentleman who was who oversees the chamber, his name is Phil, and I said, Phil, am I supposed to feel better after the first day? And he just sort of looked at me and said, well, do you feel better? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I do, I feel better. Um, and I did feel better. I could honestly say that I didn't feel pain. 
the excruciating pain that I had been feeling. And I thought, my God, this is a fluke. This is never going to last. This is just a one-day thing. It's never going to last. And I came back the second day, and I came back the third day. And I never got the pain back. Uh, never. It never regressed back to pain. After that first day, the significant pain was gone. Did I have discomfort? Yes. But I've been going through the oxygen now for, this is my eighth week, the end of my eighth week. And I am so much better that it's, it's hard to even describe how much better I feel. Because it's hard to describe how you feel with the neuropathy. If you've never had it, it's extremely difficult to make people understand what's going on inside your hands and feet that make, that, that make you, that are so painful that you don't want to walk and you don't want to use your hands and you don't want to move. Um, and I have felt all, all of that pain and now I don't feel that pain. I, I have a great range, range of motion now which I did not have uh, in April. Uh, and I know that for, for not just because I can feel it and sense it, because in my, when I do my yoga, my balance is better. I can stand on my feet in a way I couldn't before. I can move my feet and I can move my hands in a way I couldn't before. And I don't have the pain doing it at, that I had before. Um, my fingertips are probably the only thing that's numb now, just my fingertips instead of the entirety of my hands. And I'm now feeling sometimes I'm not even getting the numbing on my fingertips, that it, it, it abates, it goes away. So um, I'm feeling that sensation. My feet are, are, are I guess I, I use the term thawing. They're not, um, if you can sort of think of it as a, as a popsicle sort of melting away, this is what it sort of feels like. I'm not so frozen anymore that the tightness, tight, tight, tightness is now sort of, it's just opening up, and I can feel it opening up. Um, so while I still have sensation of freezing and tightness, it's by no means the way it was before. Uh, it's, it's so much better. And again, I can twist my feet around, I can move my toes, and I couldn't before. I have all kinds of sensations that I didn't have before. I can feel things now. I can feel the bottom of my feet. I can feel my sheets. I can feel my clothing. I can, I can feel everything. Um, so the sensations are all coming back. I'm also getting a lot of nerve shocks, which to me I think is really good because it means my nerves are working and I didn't have any nerve shocks before. Um, so while some of it's uncomfortable, while they're shooting nerve things all over me, um, I know it's a good thing because I can feel all of that and all of that's starting to, to come back. Uh, and again, there are times when I'll be laying in the middle of the night, wake up for whatever reason, and I can almost sense that my, my right foot is better than my left foot. My right foot will almost be totally open. It won't even be frozen. I won't even feel any tightness and I can move everything. So I know that something's going on inside my system that's really pushing the progress with my nerves regenerating because I can feel all this in eight weeks and I, could, I didn't have any of this in eight months. Um, while I had a little bit of progression from September to April, um, I've had such dramatic progress from April till now in the past eight weeks that it's, it's, it's phenomenal to me. It's absolutely phenomenal um, how good I feel. And, and there are times when, yeah, it's uncomfortable still. I'll, you know, it'll, it'll go through a cycle and it won't feel very good. Um, but it doesn't last as long as it used to last. I mean, we were, we were talking, you know, 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Now I might get an hour here or an hour there during the day where it cycles through and it's not happy about something and it just, you know, gets really frozen and, and then it'll just sort of open itself back up again. And, and that may last an hour. Um, so the progress that I've made, it's leaps and bounds, absolutely leaps and bounds. Um, so I have, I, I can only say that as far as I'm concerned, um, it's the oxygen therapy that has pushed me um, into this positive, you know, positive arena at this point. Um, and I can't, I, you know, can't see why I would regress. I can't see why it would go backwards. I can only see moving forward and it continuing to get better. Um, and I, I think that one of the things that probably um, 
And I even, after all of this started, I did additional research on, on oxygen just to see if, um, if there was anything that I missed out there. And they don't talk about it. They don't talk about it. And I, I actually, when I had my, my, one of my checkups with my chemo oncologist, so I asked him about it. And he was totally nonplussed and non-interested in it and basically saying that it's not proven. <laughs> and I said, but it's working for me. Why wouldn't it be something that you would recommend to, to the patients? And he said, because it's not proven to work. It's just amazing to me that something that is this powerful, that works this well, that they're not talking to chemo patients about. Um, because as far as I'm concerned, my neuropathy um, would never be uh, as, as under control as it is now, um, as it was when I started. And the medication that I've been on, the Neurontin that I've been on, I was taking anywhere between 3,000 and 3,600 milligrams a day of the Neurontin, and I'm down to 2,100 to 24 milligrams. I'm slowly starting to wean myself down. I'm, I'm not doing anything, you know, just... Um, and I'm, I'm pretty pleased about that, too, because, you know, I don't want to have to be on any kind of medication, so I'm slowly weaning myself down on that. Um, I got nothing but great things to say, and I I wish that the um, I wish that the the clinics, the clinic that I was in, and, and anybody else involved that may have a, a chemo neuropathy um, would be told about this option, because it may very well be the answer, other than sitting around waiting for something to just take care of itself uh, when you can. When you can utilize, when, when there's something out there that's going to help you, I can't understand why they wouldn't recommend it to you. That's the bottom line.